Peace and bliss, you already know what it is. Imam underscore OG. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fly shit. Welcome to Hawk School. Toward your destination. Though you may find Today we got something special, man. We just gonna do a little reaction type video. You know what I'm saying? I found a video with a lot of information. Um, dealing with uh, the Mayan and Georgia connection, and uh, I just think we should check it out. So let's get into it. You know how I rock. We're just gonna let the video play, and I'm gonna do my usual narrations for the nations. Let's get it. Basically, what they're going to do on this video is he's going to corroborate everything that's going on with the Mayans and everything that's going on in the recently discovered uh, Georgia structures that have been identified as, um, as Mayan structures. And he's going to give all the scientific proof on how these things relate. You know what I'm saying? Inscriptions. They're all over this country. Investigate these artifacts and sites, and we're going to get to the truth. Sometimes history isn't what we've been told. The Mayans came to Georgia, this could rewrite history. So for all you Pan-African ass niggas, I want you to know that this shit is already a known fact. All them old ass books you reading from Cambridge and these Europeans talking about the Darwin uh, theory and all this bullshit, the gig is up, as my brother Aboriginal Power put it. The veil is being removed, bruh. The truth is out here. How you doing? 
I'm doing good. Scott Walter. Richard Thornton, glad to meet you. Yeah, I was uh, visiting down at Chattahoochee National Forest. Yes. Trying to look at some mound structures. I'm investigating a possible connection between the Mayans and Georgia. And uh, tried to go look at these mounds, and uh, I was denied. You're kidding. No, I was denied. First of all, I take it you support this whole Mayan-Georgia connection? Well, that's, I mean, it's not even a theory, it's a fact. The Mayas are one of the Mexican... Let's bring that back. This is Richard Thornton. And they talking about Native American. That's why I want y'all to pay attention. Native American is not the same thing as Aboriginals, American Indians. You know what I'm saying? As you can clearly see, he damn near look white. No disrespect, but Native Americans are, you know what I'm saying, native to America. They're not indigenous to America. So let's, but let's, let's, let's bring back what he just said. Let's bring that back a possible connection between the Mayans and Georgia and uh, tried to go look at these mounds and uh, I was denied. You're kidding. No, I was denied. First of all, I take it you support this whole Mayan-Georgia connection? Well, that's, I mean, it's not even a theory, it's a fact. The Mayas are one of the Mexican Native American ethnic groups that became the Creek Indians. What are some of the things that to you... I mean, it's not even a theory, it's a fact. The Mayas are one of the Mexican Native American ethnic groups that became the Creek Indians. What are some of the things that to you provide evidence of this assimilation, really, or this coming together here in Georgia from Mexico? We have the architecture. We have the cultural traditions. The art are very similar. Okay. Approximately a third to a half of the words in the Itzati Creek language are either Maya or Totonac. Okay, linguistic. Linguistics. Linguistics. So what about archaeoastronomy? They like the Mayans use with these amazing structures that align with the sun, the moon, the planets for practical and religious reasons. Is any of that going on around here? Yes, very much so. That's, okay, so that's what I'm a, I'm a city planner, so yeah, I'm pretty strong, so I can help you there. Do you have any of this architecture? I have, lots of draw I have drawings and photographs, yes. Is that what they don't want me to see? I don't know what they do. Why? It's a, it's a massive site. Uh, what to keep in mind, this place is a half mile square at least. It's a town. Okay. It has over 300 stone structures. It's like nothing else in America, really. It's been radiocarbon dated to at least 1000 AD. What do the archaeologists think about this? I thought the archaeological community would go gaga. You know, they'd be fighting over the chance to be the one to be the great discovery of all their lives. Would you believe? that some professors who had never seen this track rock site, they formed a political action group to oppose anything discussion of the track rock site and it being my unit. Now, why? I don't know, because they're like 600 miles away. So you're a, a political every of all their lives. Would you believe that some professors who had never seen this track rock site, they formed a political action group to oppose anything discussion of the track rock site and it being my unit. Now, why? I don't know, because they're like 600 miles away. So you're asking me if I would believe that... So they're 600 miles away, and they, they don't formed a political group to push against any Mayan connection. Why? We know why. All the Hawks know why. Because the Mayans are Creek Indians. The Creek Indians are so-called Negroes. So, of course, they formed a group. He said, why? I don't know. They're 600 miles away. Why is they tripping off what I'm doing? The academic community might try to shut down an investigation like this. Uh, yes, I would. <laughs> look, look, pal. Boy. So you're asking me if I would believe that the academic community might try to shut down an investigation like this? Uh, yes, I would. <laughs> look, look, pal, I've lived it, okay? I was hired to investigate an artifact called the Kensington Room Yes, yes, I've heard of it. When I came out with these results, I was blasted, and it really puzzled me at first, and then it pissed me off. Well, I've spent the last 12 years investigating these historical mysteries, and when you tell me that there's pushback from the professional or the academic community, uh, I'm interested. That, that's a sure sign that there's probably something going on here.
these are some of John's videos. You can see the rocks. Mm -hmm. That's a ruin of a building. It looks like an offering altar with a little hole here. I was thinking that also, if this would have been covered with, with clay and then plastered with the lime stucco. It, you know, Richard, I have to say, when I look at something like this, I, I'm not impressed. You know, I thought I'd be seeing these cut, beautifully cleaved work stones and these big temples that you think of when you think of people like the Maya. I mean, right. why don't we have that here? This is what most Maya sites look like before the archives go to work and the arch architects like me restore the ruins. That's what they look like. They're just piles of rocks. Even great cities with, that had 100,000 people would be piles of stones in the jungle. What does this site look like? Can you give me a visual? This is a... No, I just want to pause that. He's talking about some damn piles of stones in the jungle. We already know from our research, ain't no fucking piles of stone in the jungle when you're dealing with... Uh, What's in South America, you know what I'm saying, in Central America, as far as what the Mayans and Aztecs and, uh, you know what I mean, the ancestors was building. So all this pile of stone shit, I guess he ain't made it out that fucking hut in Georgia, but anyway. Computer virtual reality model. Obviously, there's some elevation here. It'd be nice to see some topographic lines, maybe yes. a topo map. Of well, now I have topo maps on my computer. Okay, I was going to ask. This you. is a 3D model, but if you'd like to see the actual elevations, I would like to see that. Do you see the Krampus? See that? Yeah. You see yeah. that terraced, just like the five-sided mound, oh, this and is it's facing the sunset of the winter solstice these astronomically aligned structures the whole village the way they're oriented is very important there are many monuments perhaps 50 stone cairns that seem to be markers having to do with astronomy so what is this that's one of the things when i knew is it's a maya when i saw that I said oh my gosh Actually, well, some other it? Things, but I <laughs> it is a it device is. that takes the water yeah. from the spring and to drop the water to the appropriate terrace it's a control device oh, for distributing okay. water I'm trying. A control device for distributing water. You see what I'm talking about? You gotta stay woke, man. We had whole cities, we had whole civilizations, bro. These invaders came over here blowing shit up. You know what I'm saying? Raping and pillaging, burning shit up. You know what I'm talking about? And all you got left is a whole bunch of niggas that don't even know what their house look like no more. Cause they been so trampled on. Stole the language of the people. You know what I'm saying? And because we kept the oral tradition, we had no way of relating any of our teachings to each other anymore. You know what I'm saying? They cut us off from the elders. So that's why our generation has to do so much research just to try to connect the dots. You know what I'm saying? Try to clear away the smoke. What they say, see the, the, uh, see the fire, clear away the smoke, see the fire for the smoke. I don't know, nigga, you know the saying, put it in the comments experiment with here is why did they do it why did they build the terraces i am mimicking the environmental situation in track rock gap of well, the maya civilization grew these crops on the terraces all right i want y'all to pay attention to this real quick because you got this native american he out here living in off the land in the cabin with his dogs he online got his laptops all this shit and he out here gardening building a terrace just like the mayans and he living off of it. You know what I'm saying? This how he living. Straight off the land, bro. And he's still out there online, goddamn me. You can still go live on YouTube. You know what I'm talking about? But I just want y'all to see, man, why our land is so important. Look what you can do with your land, bro. You can build a house, build your garden, feed yourself, nigga. Let your dogs run loose, shoot your guns. Be be free. Be, be how God intended us to be. Free, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, no man, no corporation has entitlement over us. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to wait. Nobody has entitlement over us. You know what I'm saying? And, who, and uh, our rights. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't, we shouldn't be subjugated to nobody telling us where we can go. We all grown, man. You grown. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what's your ideology in life. Or, or you can't go nowhere without that passport, bro. You can't even leave, bro. So at the end of the day, you under subjugation. You're a prisoner of war, my nigga. So do you think what we have at Track Rock is, can 
connected to the Mayans somehow? Yes, there's a direct connection. Okay, why would they not let me in to see this? I mean, it's just terrorism. It leads me to believe that there's more going on here. Do you uh, do you think there's a conspiracy maybe going on? There's something fishy going on up there. I'm thinking there's something fishy too, but I'll tell you what. If they won't let me hike in, maybe I'll fly in. Have you ever heard of LiDAR? Quick, quick, quick point. This is in Georgia, my nigga. In America. And the government will not allow this man to go hiking in Georgia where these ruins are. You can't go hiking in Georgia? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what's really going on? So now he got to fly in with the plane. We know about the LIDAR. They're going to explain it all. But that's how they found the 60,000 structures in, uh, in the jungle. You know what I'm saying? In South America, using this LIDAR detection. And the LIDAR, that's the same shit they use for the autonomous cars and shit. So it creates a picture and it removes all the foliage and all that. So all you see is solid structures. So now he has to use that flying over the state of Georgia, bro. In the United States. He has to use this, pay these people so they can map this out. Because the government won't even let him on the land. That says a lot, bro. Look what he got to go through in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? This Georgia, bro. This ain't South America. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no other country, nigga. This Georgia. Small talk, man. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. How does this lidar work? Well, what you have in between these two pieces of the system is a laser head and a scanner and a GPS receiver, and they're using timestamps. We're able to create um, a point cloud, which is a set of points accurately mapped and geo referenced in a few centimeters. Within a few centimeters? Absolutely. It looks like you've set up a grid system, so basically you're just reproducing that grid? We kind of think of it as mowing the lawn when we're up here. Because it's down and back, and we use some overlap to make sure that we don't miss any grass. So hopefully anything that shows like it was a shell or any anomalies in the, in the bare earth surface will hopefully show up. That. that type of scale, we should be able to get some data. Yeah, some stuff may look like it blends into the ground. And right. Any kind of irregular features will still stand out. If we're able to use your technology, some of the things we 
an initial look at the actual LIDAR data itself, so the points themselves, so you can see the flight lines that we flew right here. And then down here is a profile of the ground. You can see the trees. Okay, and I see the uh, change in topography here. This looks like something interesting. What would that be? Um, a bump there. Maybe a, a man-made feature. It looks like it might be one of the features that we're looking for. Okay, possibly a terrace, maybe? Correct. But this is preliminary, and so what we will do is we'll, we'll take and have to process the data, and that will probably take a couple weeks to get the, the final data set so that we can verify okay. if that is actually a man-made feature or not. A 3D uh, map, about two weeks, eh? Yep. Great. You know, Jamie, when I started this investigation, I was pretty skeptical. I mean, the notion that the Mayans came to Georgia seemed pretty far-fetched to me. But as I've gone along here, things are starting to look more interesting. If you can generate a 3D map that looks even remotely like this, I tell you what, we could potentially have something that's big. If those features are there, we're definitely going to see them in the data. for Aerometric to compile all the LIDAR data, which could help prove a Mayan connection to Georgia. If the Mayans did come here, I wonder if it's connected to their prophecy. The Mayan civilization began in 2000 BC and started to collapse around 750 AD when they began to abandon their cities in mass. They had to go somewhere, and this stone... Now see, just to give you a little background on them, them abandoning the cities, and this uh, come from the brother Rob Colleone, you know what I'm saying, Wind Clan, you know what I'm talking about, shout out to, shout out to my brother, shout out to the chiefs, peace to the tribe, but he was talking about that they was fleeing because it was different, it was different, uh, I can't remember which group, but certain groups was sacrificing niggas, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and they was fleeing. You know what I'm saying? If you watch the movie Apocalypto, Apocalypto, that's about us. You know what I'm saying? Go check that out. And of course, you know what I'm saying? They got people playing the indigenous people who we know, if we you do any research, don't, you know what I'm saying, look like the indigenous people. You know what I'm saying? All these people we see with these features, you know what I'm talking about, are people who were once aborigines, you know what I'm saying, looking like so-called Negroes or and and they were they were conquered you know what i'm saying you that's so why i just had to tell somebody a native american was commenting on my video and talking reckless but i had to remind him the the spanish been over here the french the portuguese the british all these people have been mixing and inner and interbreeding with the tribe you know what i'm saying for hundreds of years and this is how you get you know what i'm saying shit looking the way it is this how you got all these Chiefs, you know what I'm saying? You got all these five dollar Indians on the reservation and they straight up Europeans, you know what I'm saying? Descendants of peasants from Liverpool. You know what I'm talking about? So stay woke, man. That's all. Nearby could be a clue they came to the US. Georgia connection in your mind? Both cultures, the Maya and the Creek Indians, use the exact same symbols to record the exact same event. Well, you know, Gary, I clear your mind. Both cultures, the Maya. I think the rock looks better wet than if it was dry. I agree. What makes this rock specifically tied to the Maya Georgia connection in your mind? Both cultures, the Maya and the Creek Indians, use the exact same symbols to record the exact same event. Well, you know, Gary, I clearly see these spiral symbols here. Um, we got an indentation in the middle. This one has a couple of different rings with an indentation. And then we have these cupules along the top. Um, I know what I think it is, but what do you see? And my first impression was that it, it's a star map. I believe that this records 
an event which happened in 536 AD, which was a comet impact event. And that would explain why they went through the effort to carve this into this boulder. This was no easy task. No, it wasn't. And I have to say, Gary, that I agree with you. I'm pretty convinced this is a star map as well. It's an interesting connection with the uh, with the impact and the symbols tying the, uh, the creek with the Maya. I think that's plausible. But this might not be the only geologic clue that uh, makes a connection. Tell me what you know about Maya Blue. The Maya Blue was a pigment that the Maya used in their murals, and it lasts a very long time without fading. And I think I understand the reason for that. Uh, Maya Blue is a very interesting combination of a clay mineral called Paligorskite that they mix with a uh, an indigo pigment made from an anneal plant. And there's lots of Paligorskite in Georgia, but relatively little of it in Mexico. Gary, I think. Pay attention. And indigo. Pay attention. And I think I understand the reason for that. Uh, Maya blue is a very interesting combination of a clay mineral called paligorskite that they mix with a uh, an indigo pigment made from an anneal plant. And there's lots of paligorskite in Georgia, but relatively little of it in Mexico. Gary, I think that the Maya blue in Mexico could have been made with the paligorskite clay in Georgia. Okay, so now you got the Mayan blue, which is a clearly a color identified with the Mayans, and it's made with, what did he say? Palagorskite clay. And the Palagorskite clay ain't in Mexico. It's in Georgia. So, to me, this is saying that not only were they here, but somebody was moving back and forth. You know what I'm saying? This ain't new. And that even goes into what uh, uh, my brother Rob was saying about the uh the women you know what i'm saying because the tribes was were matrilineal they had control they had control of the mississippi river they had control of the trade and you know the mississippi river is going to spill out right into the you know what i'm saying you damn near going to shoot you to the yucatan we had to break this up you know i had used up all the memory on my phone so we're going to get back to it and we we had uh the mayan blue you know what i'm talking about and talking about uh clay that's used to make the mine blue is only found uh is found in mass in georgia so let's see let's see what he's talking about There are still sites in Mexico where they haven't found the actual source for the Maya blue so that's definitely a good thing to look into so we've got in georgia but relatively little of it sky that lasts a very long time makes a connection. Tell me what you know about Maya Blue. The Maya Blue was a pigment that the Maya used in their murals, and it lasts a very long time without fading. And I think I understand the reason for that. Uh, Maya Blue is a very interesting combination of a clay mineral called paligorskite that they mix with a uh, an indigo pigment made from an anneal plant. And there's lots of paligorskite in Georgia, but relatively little of it in Mexico. Gary, I think that the Maya blue in Mexico could have been made with the Palagorskite clay in Georgia. There are still sites in Mexico where they haven't found the actual source for the Maya blue. So that's definitely a good thing to look into. So we've got the, uh, the, the Maya blue pigment mystery as well as star maps both there and in Georgia. That's interesting. And those are not the only connections. It goes much deeper than that. Now check these out. This copper plate was unearthed in North Georgia. What's interesting about this is that almost an identical image as this was found at Chichen Itza in the Yucatan. Wow. This looks like uh, some type of uh, shaman or somebody in the middle of a ritual. Is that a severed head? Yep. And you have this in Chichen Itza as well. Exactly. Wow. Are there any other sites that might uh, tie into the middle of a ritual? Image at connections. It goes a blue pigment mystery as well as star maps both there and in Georgia. That's interesting. And those are not the only connections. It goes much deeper than that. Now check these out. This copper plate was unearthed in North Georgia. What's interesting about this is that almost... An Did y'all know there was a copper plate? On Earth in North Georgia. You know what I'm talking about? If you're from Georgia, leave it in the comments. ATL. Shout out to ATL. You know what I'm talking about? 
all my family down there. But if, if, if you know anything about these copper plates that are identical to the cop to the uh, images found in in the Mayan structures and uh, Mexico and whatnot, if you're familiar with that, leave it in the comment. If this shit is blowing your mind, leave that in the comment too. Identical image as this was found at Chichen Itza in the Yucatan. Wow. This looks like uh, some type of uh, shaman or somebody in the middle of a ritual. Is that a severed head? Yep. And you have this in Chichen Itza as well. Exactly. Wow. Are there any other sites that might uh, tie into what we're looking at here? Absolutely. Just a few hours from here, there's a site called Pokemolgi. They found an elite burial that showed cranial deformation, a known technique in the Maya world that they also use on their elites. We're gonna edit. We're gonna edit out these commercials. They got me fucked up. And we back. Cranial deformation is a procedure they did at birth where they placed the, the child on a flattened board, placed another board on his head, which forced the, the skull to grow in a certain shape, which gave them sort of a, a flattened appearance to the forehead. With everything I've seen so far, how come nobody knows about this? People have been writing in the literature, the archaeological literature, about this connection for 150 years. I've seen so far. How come nobody knows about this? People have been writing in the literature, the archaeological literature, about this connection for a hundred for 150 years. Now here you got the dude at the Georgia Historical Society, whatever museum he done pulled up at, and he's saying that the archaeological community has been writing about the connection between the Mayans and the Creek Indians in Georgia and all this for 150 years. Right? So when y'all get done talking like this, some new shit, this is known, and this is what I be telling you. You ain't read enough. You haven't read enough, bro. It was taking me my whole life to filter through all of the bullshit just to be at this point. So don't come on here commenting, dog. Like we new to this. We grew to this. You know what I'm talking about? Big Hawking. 150 years, but it has become a taboo subject. I'm continually amazed every time I see something new that is it changes history in a profound way and it gets ignored, swept under the rug, and people that even dare to investigate it get criticized. I've been through that myself. You gotta figure out a way to make it stop. Yeah, they say science changes one death at a time, and I think that's what it's gonna take. You know what? What do you say? Science changes one death at a time. You're still waiting for these old races to die. For the truth to come out. 150 years they known this. Not 15, not 50, 150. You do the math. I'm not gonna wait for these people to die. Sorry. I'm gonna get answers. Let's go to Old Hogan. Georgia connection? Well, I've been researching the Georgia-Mexico connection uh, for about 10 years, but it was only within the last couple of years that I really stumbled on the Mayan presence in both Florida and Georgia. Okay. What do you think of uh, Richard Thornton's research? Stumbled on the Georgia connection. Well, I've been researching the Georgia-Mexico connection uh, for about 10 years, but it was only within the last couple of years that I really stumbled on the Mayan presence in both Florida and Georgia. Okay. Mayan presence in both Mayan presence in both Florida and Georgia. <laughs> Ain't nothing but niggas in Florida and Georgia. Message. <laughs> What do you think of uh, Richard Thornton's research? You know, Mr. Thornton has presented a hypothesis, and that hypothesis needs to be tested. Is the track rock site a Mayan site? You know, I don't know. Could it be? Absolutely, it could be. But we're never going to know that as long as the academics are insisting that it can't be. So instead of sitting in your chair talking about it, actually getting out there and doing something. Absolutely. Right? Making proclamations about what it isn't serves no purpose. I agree. <laughs> 
It's a spiral mound, isn't it? That's without the vegetation. Well, now I can kind of see it. Can we take a closer look? Let's go. All right. We got mounds in Minnesota, but I haven't seen any this big. One, two, three, four. Now, this spiral mound is it's in Macon, Georgia. If I if I remember correctly, if not, correct me in the comments, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's probably structures up under there too, but that's that's something that's real strange too. Is they they've been knowing about all this shit, you know what I'm saying, for a hundred hundred plus years, and everything is just left, you know what I'm saying. But they go through so much, they go through so much work with this Egypt shit, you know what I'm saying. They don't want to dig this up and let you see what's over here, see what your ancestors left behind. You know what I mean? Because they want you to think we was just buck naked running through the fucking trees, my nigga. When we was had cities built, taught them how to build cities, temples, observatories. You know what I'm saying? Taught them how to bathe. You know what I'm talking about? How to raise raise they uh how to uh plant crops. You know what I'm saying? How to feed they self. You know what I mean? Everything, bro, came from the so-called Aboriginal, so-called Indians, so-called Negroes, bro. And then, you know, it's crazy because as you get older and it's like all these, they made like all these people just disappeared without a trace. Oh, the people of Cahokia just disappeared without a trace. The whole city disappeared on the same day. Oh, the aliens must have came and got them. And them niggas across the river in St. Louis. Yeah, I see at least one, two, Four, three. Five levels. Even maybe a f fifth one up there. This is cool as hell. There's a site called Xochitlcatl in Mexico, and it's the only other place in North America or Central America that has a spiral mound exactly like this, where you follow the spiral to the top. Not only that, it's laid out exactly like the mound site here, with the spiral mound on one end and the square mound on the other. This mound, the Creek Indians said, this is where they perform their snake dance, and so they... Like the mound site here with the spiral mound on one end and the square mound on the other. This mound, the Creek Indians said, this is where they perform their snake dance. And so they marched in procession around the mound until they reached the top for their ceremony. There was also Lake Okeechobee. Now, when the Spanish came to Lake Okeechobee, they found three people living around that lake. The Maya Imi, the Mayaka, and the Maya Yuaki. So three people calling themselves Maya. Maya. Is there also maybe a connection to Miami? Absolutely. This is really incredible. I had no idea that there would be a spiral mount. Man, when all these old Pan-African niggas get, get done, got down talking, that's all you doing, talking, bruh. Regurgitating what some other Pan African ass nigga done taught you. I already told you, man. Pfft. Hawk Talk Live, man. Go subscribe to the backup channel, Hawk Talk Live. Stop what you're doing. Pause the video. Type Hawk Talk Live in, in the uh, description. And you see the first, first video that pops up? All your elders are agents, my nigga. And if they don't know it, then they ain't studied up. Any nigga who studied up. Is gonna know the truth. You know what I'm saying? So either you ignorant or you an agent, my nigga. One of the two. Come on over here to Hawk School, man. We can teach you how to fly. Here, we have spiral mounds in Mexico. This Maya Georgia connection is really starting to come together, and I'm feeling it. me some archaeoastronomy. I see a beautiful mound structure here with a long doorway that's facing pretty close to due east. 
according to the Creek Migration legend, the very first structure they built when they arrived here was a mound with a central chamber. The doorway of this earth lodge aligned with the sunrise. There's no question that the Mayans also aligned their temples and their structures according to archaeoastronomy. So, is this purely a coincidence? Clearly there was something going on. This is fascinating. I mean, we've got two large mounds. We've got this one here that has an obvious alignment both to the sun and to the stars. We've got that amazing their temples and their structures according to archaeoastronomy. So, is this purely a coincidence? Clearly there was something going on. This is fascinating. I mean, we've got two large mounds. We've got this one here that has an obvious alignment both to the sun and to the stars. We've got that amazing spiral structure, the cranial deformation. I'm dying to go to Mexico. If I can find some of the things that are here over there, we've got something that's huge. And this is what it boiled down to. This is how much work it takes. You know what I'm saying? So all you niggas who disagree, you're going to have a hard time competing with this work that this uh, <coughs> pale face putting in. So shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? When you niggas get done talking, shout out to him. Because this motherfucker done went higher, whoever. He done got somebody to pay for the for the LIDAR. You know what I'm saying? This nigga done went to Georgia. Now he about to go to Mexico, compare notes, go to the Yucatan. You know what I'm saying, and that's that's what it really take. But we that's why I thought it would be it would be a good experience for us to watch this video and see all these dots being connected. You know what I'm saying, like see it. You know what I mean, seeing seeing it with your eyes. You know what I'm talking about. Well, I mean it's it's a video, but take your eyes down there. You look in the camera. Take your eyes down there. Look at that. And you niggas steady talking about some Egypt and some Khufu pyramids. Man, look at that brickwork, man. Look at that, bro. Look at that. Come on, man. So you mean to tell me that the niggas who didn't finish the pyramids in Egypt taught you how to build that? Yeah, all right. Now, remember earlier in the video when the other dude was hijacking, talking about, <coughs> oh, when you go to the jungle, that's what you see. Just piled up rocks. That's all you see. So if we go to Mexico, you telling me all we're going to see is piled up rocks. Now, you would believe that if that motherfucker told you, but he took his ass to Mexico. Try to pause that man. That shit look bombed out, man. You know what I'm saying? They came over here blowing shit up, bruh. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> they didn't do that to Egypt, though, did they? No, they built it. Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Welcome nice to, meet to you. the site of Chichen Itza. Everything you see is archaeological evidence. Everything. Everything. Okay. Now, notice he said that. Uh, it, it was brought to my attention when I watched it the first time. He said, everything you see is archaeological evidence because he letting them know, don't be picking shit up trying to put it in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? Test it and none of that shit. See, the government's got all this shit on lock. This man had to hire a goddamn pilot to fly over Georgia in the United States. This is how hard they working to cover this shit up. You know what I'm saying? So if you in Georgia... 
Get over there, man. Get over there with your camcorder. You know what I'm saying? Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Site of Chichen Itza. Everything you see is archaeological evidence. Everything. Everything. Okay. How big is this site? It's really hard to tell. Bam. Look what your look what your people did. Look at that. Now, if we go look at Egypt, you'll see why they want to send us over to Africa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look how lush that land is, bro. Look at that. Fertile. You know what I'm saying? Everything around there fertile. We don't have a full map on the site. I know it took thousands of people to build sites like Chichen Itza. The Maya Empire was massive, encompassing parts of southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and the Yucatan. Many people think the Mayans died out completely, but they didn't. Even so, something forced them to abandon their major cities beginning around 750 AD and spread throughout the region or beyond. Look at that work, man. Look at that work. Completely, but they didn't. Even so, something forced them to abandon their major cities beginning around 750 AD and spread. Look at that work. Look at that brickwork. <clears throat> Eat your heart out, Egypt. All you Egyptian lovers. Look at that, man. That's what they was trying to do. They was trying to duplicate over there, you know what I'm saying, in Egypt. Throughout the region, or beyond, to the United States. Oh, wow. You know, from this perspective, it's just like symmetric. It's perfect. The lines are perfect. That's amazing. They were copying the shapes of the mountains. So what we're looking at here is really a, a man-made mountain. It was intentionally made to mimic the mountains. I've recently been to a site in North America in the state of Georgia. And one of the things that we did that was amazing, and, and I haven't seen the final results yet, but I saw some preliminary data with some technology called LIDAR, where basically you fly over an area and it will collect three-dimensional uh, data of the topography of the area. And what we think we see are remnants of man-made structures at the site that are somewhat reminiscent of what we see here. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the possibility of contact uh, with the Mayans here, possibly with uh, native cultures in what is now the United States. I think it's very possible. Oh, you're saying that flat out. Okay, well, you agree with the speculation. If we really understand what the Maya did here, and if we really think there was contact, then what we do is take everything that we learn here and then use that as a guide to look for evidence over there. Yes, yeah, I would agree. You can maybe find a Maya there, or you can find a Georgian down here. You see the smile on his face? He know what time it is. He don't want. He don't want. He don't want to give it up though. As a guide. To he don't want to give it up. Here, possibly with uh, native cultures in what is now the United States. I think it's very possible. Oh, you're saying that flat out? Okay. Well, you agree with the speculation? If we really understand what the Maya did here, and if we really think there was contact, then what we do is take everything that we learn here and then use that as a guide to look for evidence over there. Yes, yeah, I would agree. You can maybe find a Maya there, or you can find a Georgian down here. Well, this building that we have in front of us is the observatory and has been proven by astronomers that it's a structure that is aligned. Well, this building that we have in front of us is the observatory and has been proven by astronomers that it's a structure that aligns to different positions of Venus and positions of the Sun. So those small little windows up there, they were used to track these planets, track Venus. You know that this window aligned...
Now, y'all want to talk all this tough shit about Egypt and it's aligned and all this shit. You can't even go inside them pyramids. What is you talking about? You can't even go in there. You're going to crawl in that little hole. Man, we over here building observatories. You're... To this part of the year and this one aligns to this time of the year. But there's a connection between architecture, astronomy, and the calendar. Well, this is part of a science we call archaeoastronomy. Right. The other thing that we believe in is that creating a building that has alignments with the planets and the sun, you are creating a link between heaven and earth. So the building is the link between the two. In Georgia, I saw a spiral mound. I also saw a boulder that had spirals carved into it. So the spiral is very important. It crossed Georgia, and it seems to connect over here with the Mayans. So maybe that's another uh, connection or a piece of evidence we can uh, tie together between the two cultures. Yeah, I think it's a very strong element, and I think it's very important for the Maya to see everything. This is called the Nautilus shell. It's the spiral design. We have something here called the Fibonacci sequence. And it's just simply an, um, a mathematical calculation where you add numbers sequentially and it will grow exponentially, creating, in this case, a spiral. Many ancient cultures saw this design, figured out the mathematics of it in nature, and then incorporated it into the architecture and into their artwork. Oh, yes, it's very important to go into Maya. Buildings are designed in geometric proportions. And I was just building with my Aboriginal power. Shout out to him. Go subscribe to his channel right now. Thorough. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> and we was just building on observing nature. You know what I'm talking about? And and that's and that's what I said. That's where real knowledge is found through observation. You know what I'm talking about? This is how we rock this in our DNA. This is why we here. This is why you here. You know what I'm talking about? You don't need no DNA test. Every molecule of who you are is calling. You know what I'm saying? Calling you. You know what I mean? To your right path. Into the eye of the human. We're getting very close to the end of the Mayan calendar, which is December 21st, which ironically happens to be my birthday. So, uh, and many people think this is going to be the end of the world because of the Mayans. We are ending the 12 Bactun. That means we're going to start the 13 Bactun during your birthday, and then we're going to spend 400 years more counting days until we get to the 14 Bactun. So what he talking about is regeneration, a rebirth. What's supposed to start? Everybody's like, oh, 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. No, it's about to be a rebirth. And now look. Now look. The calendar's still wrong? Or is it? Marker for a new beginning. The 13th back to during your birthday. And then we're going to spend 400 years more counting days until we get to the 14th back to It's a marker for a new beginning. If the Mayans were here, it will be the biggest celebration you can think about. There will be offerings, there will be sacrifices, there will be ceremonies, because it's not the end, it's just the beginning of something new. But I think it's really important that the Mayans are getting some attention. I couldn't agree more. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the carvings um, at your site here. And uh, there was something that was found in uh, Georgia. I have seen similar carvings, or at least the, the head of the captive on this side. Yes, I think I can show you something similar. Now, see, also, when you did uh, do the research on the Cahokia Mounds, it's something similar to that found at uh, just Google Mound 72, Cahokia. Do your research, do your due diligence, and you'll see that that same thing, that same um, <clears throat> symbol is being represented in what they found in the Cahokia Mounds. I already thoroughly researched that. You can check that out for yourself. Mile 72. Go see what's in Mile 72. You can tell that the person has some sort of a 
or instrument in his hand like this one right here. Mm -hmm. He has also feathers in the back like he has coming this way. Right. Yeah. But the most striking part is that there's a little head hanging from his uh, left hand with the spears are. You can see that the head is almost identical to the one he has there. Maybe a captain, maybe somebody who knows the world. Really, everything that you talked about I see here, this is pretty compelling, is it not? Yeah, yes, I, think I can see a relationship between the two sides. I see a huge piece to a, a big puzzle of many cultures coming to North America prior to Columbus. And I think we can put the Mayans into that puzzle. And it just completely rewrites the history of North America as we know it prior to Columbus. And I think we can put the Mayans into that puzzle. And it just completely rewrites the history of North America as we know it. We're going to edit all that shit out. Completely rewrites the history of North America as we know it. Ain't that what he said? And it's now free to start. <clears throat> Yo, this shit's mind-blowing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mind-boggling. Straight up. How do you not know this? You know what I'm saying? Oh no, they wanna they wanna stop it. You can't stop it. Cause see all this oh. I can see a relationship between the two sides. I see a huge piece to a, a big puzzle of many cultures coming to North America prior to Columbus. And I think we can put the Mayans into that puzzle. And it just completely rewrites the history of North America as we know it. so far. We've got the temples here. We've got similar stone structures in Georgia. We've got the linguistic connections. We've got the iconography of the mural that's so fantastic it's virtually identical. We've got the archaeoastronomy. I tell you, we're starting to build a pretty strong case here. What can you tell me about Maya Blue? Let me show you. It's huge. This is a giant sinkhole. It's just incredible. Well, this is the most special place in Chichen Itza. This is where it gets its name. Chichen means the mouth of the sinkhole. That means a cenote. And not only is it a water place, but it's also a sacred place to bring offerings. What do we know about the bottom? What's on the bottom? They found uh, Maya Blue. They found remains of children between 9 and 10. This is crazy. Why would they throw children in here? The belief is that children are the ideal messenger to the rain god. So you, when you want to please the rain god, you use children as offerings. So you sacrifice them. Okay, so this follow up with what we was talking about earlier, what my brother Rob was building on. You know what I'm saying? About our children were being sacrificed so you know it's still a lot of digging to do you know what i mean still a lot of a lot of digging to do man because a lot of we've missed out on a lot of knowledge just not knowing that you know what i'm saying it, it was referring to our people you know what i mean so a lot of us have been turned off about learn uh, about learning different things you know what i'm saying like for the about the mayans and the aztecs and the incas you know what i'm saying we didn't know that was us so we were uninterested. All we saw was the images being portrayed to us of all these uh, watered down, the Matisse and all these Native Americans and, you know what I'm saying, everything else, you know what I mean? So much so that niggas think Spanish is like a language that belongs to anyone other than the invaders. You know what I'm saying? The Spanish, Portuguese, all these motherfucker British, French, they been invading the land, you know what I'm saying? And we already read in the book where they said they wanted to blanch the Indians. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to turn them white through intermarriage. You know what I'm saying? And now we fast forward and here we are. You know what I'm talking about? But anyway, so they sacrificing the kids. That's what he say. They got the Mayan blue all over them. But the Mayan blue can only come from the clay that's found in Georgia. So 
Just pay attention, man. Stay hawking. Okay. Wow. Geologically, I've read... Children between 9 and 10. This is crazy. Why would they throw children in here? The belief is that children are the ideal messenger to the rain god. So you, when you want to please the rain god, you use children as offerings. So you sacrifice them. Okay. Wow. Geologically, I've read that down at the bottom of this cenote, there is a four meter or about 14 foot thick layer that is heavily laden with Maya blue clay. That represents a lot of material. How would that much Maya blue get, get in the, uh, the bottom? One good possibility will be that the children were painted blue before being thrown into the cenote. The other thing is that we have other types of sacrifices. The sacrifices that we know that happen in Chichen because we have a uh, carving and a painting that shows the person being against a trapezoid stone so they can put pressure in the back and they can use a knife and slice the chest open and pull the heart out and then offer it to the gods. So they place them on a rock to arch their body. So You know, I find this real intriguing because we know at the Karel Supe site they found absolutely no weapons at all. You know what I'm saying? Well, at least that's what they tell us. The archaeologists said there were no weapons. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, we still piecing it all together. You know what I'm talking about? The true story. When they made the incision, it would naturally open, and then they would go in. Oh, you know, I knew that they used the Maya blue in the murals and in some of the artifacts, the vessels and various things, but I, I had no idea that they were using it to paint the people for sacrifice. That's, that's, yeah, that's what we assume by the amount of Maya blue in the bottom of the Cenote. Is there any Maya blue, the original Maya blue, still on site here anywhere? Oh, yes, there's still uh, some that we can, we can see, and there's still some on inside of the building. I think the Maya blue could be the hard link between the Mayans and Georgia. As a geologist, it just might be the scientific proof I've been looking for. This is a good example of Maya blue. You can tell it is around the, the square. Maya blue was used for painting buildings and painting offerings, and sometimes sacrificial victims. My understanding is that the longevity of this material, why it lasts so long, is because it's made of a very special clay called Palagorskite, combined with a blue dye or an indigo dye made from anil leaves around here. It resists acids and it's very durable. Now, this type of clay we commonly see in cat litter it causes clumping. We also see it in anti-diarrhea medicine because it absorbs the toxins. So this clay material is very unique. It creates a, a dye that lasts a very long time. How long has this pigment been sitting on this wall? Well, the dates we have is about 980. That will be about 1,100 years ago. 1,100 years ago. Indeed. So this unique clay, where would they get this source material? I don't know. I haven't found a single source. Yes, and that's another important piece to this puzzle that we're trying to figure out is we do have um, a very good source of Palagorskite in Georgia, and this could be the source for the Mayans. And I do have a way I think we might be able to test this so we can compare it to see if this is the same source material as, as Georgia found here. I'm getting really excited about this case. We have the cranial deformation. We have evidence in Georgia of that practice. We know we have it here. We have the wonderful mural that you showed us, that the iconography that was virtually identical to that copper plate that we talked about. We have stone structures in Georgia that have a similar layout, at least appears to be a similar layout to what we have here. And lastly, we have archaeoastronomy, which ties all people together, but certainly the culture in Georgia that we're looking at and the Maya people here. We still have the uh, LIDAR data that we need to look at, but I tell you what, this is looking really good.
right, Jamie, show me what you got here. So this is the LiDAR data of the track route site. And so what we're looking at here, this is the side of the mountain that we were flying around with your plane and shooting with the LiDAR. We've taken the trees away. I put markers in here to kind of indicate um, in relationship to the picture that you gave me of the site itself. Are you saying that Richard Thornton's recreation of what he thinks is there correlates with what you found on the, on the LiDAR? In terms of my LiDAR experience, yes. I really? think that there's a very strong indication that this <laughs> correlates very well. You can see it here, here. You can see something here, and then you can see all the little terraces down here. This is amazing. What about the Oak Mogi site? Were you able to fly over there? Yeah, we actually did get oh, down were? there, and we were able to fly it. Right here, what we're looking at is the actual LiDAR data, so how it's represented. This is the spiral site. I think I can see what looked to be the terraces that we saw at the site. There's no mistaking when you look at that image that it's definitely a mound. The spirals appear to be there, and it. And see, when y'all get done talking all this mound shit, bro, this shit 1100 years old and 900 years old, all this old 900 AD ass shit, and you think ain't no fucking grass finna grow over it? Ain't no dirt finna blow up on top of it? Man, come on, bro. Man. Hawks don't fly with pigeons, man. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fly shit. Looks virtually identical to spiral mounds that are down in Mexico. I tell you what, this is really coming together. I'm just, I can't believe it. I mean, we've got spiral mounds that the Mayans built. We've got them in Georgia. We've got archaeoastronomy, both the Mayans and in Georgia. We've got cultural iconography. We've got cranial deformation. We've got linguistics. It's really coming together. All the pieces are beginning to fit. But there's one more thing that I want to do. A, uh, a quick test that I think might be the final piece that pulls this all together to prove that Mayan-Georgia connection. Do we have? We're going to make some Maya blue. It's a paint that the Mayans made. It was very sacred to them. They used it in murals. They also used it in sacrifice, ritual sacrifices. Paint the victim head to toe in this Maya blue paint, rip their hearts out, and then throw the body in a huge sinkhole they call the cenote. But I think geology is going to solve the question that we're trying to answer here, which is, did the Mayans use Georgia clay, specifically Palagorskite clay? Using indigo from a needle loose and palagorskite clay from Georgia, I'm going to make Maya blue. If the Georgia clay in my sample matches x-ray test results of clay used in real Maya blue, then we have a hard geological link between the Mayans and Georgia. in Mexico, but there's just not enough sources to explain the amount of palagorskite that they found. Well, I definitely think we can help you with this, so uh, let's have a look. If you're able to make a definitive connection, it will prove to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that we definitely have this connection between the Mayans in Mexico and Georgia.
I'm surprised, but yet I'm not surprised. Given everything that I've seen, this was the final piece to tie this together. There's a whole host of academics that refuse to believe that there were cultures that came to North America prior to Columbus. And it's bullshit. This is scientific proof of a connection. It's impossible to deny. It's going to make a lot of people very excited. Richard Thornton, uh, one of them, was a researcher that was adamant that there was absolutely a connection. You know... <laughs> Georgia. This testing here not only forces us to re-examine this chapter of American history, but it demands that we open up the whole book to get to the truth of what really happened. Mayan prophecy does declare 2012 as a turning point. Maybe not the end, but the start of a new Batu, a new beginning. A new beginning might have been what the Mayans were looking for in Georgia. Whatever it was, it must have involved archaeological astronomy. Some sort of alignment to the stars. There are so many unanswered questions still out there. What I've learned about where they went and what they believe is just the beginning. There's more to America than we realize. We have the right to question the history we've been taught. To examine things with our own eyes. So yeah, that was some pretty heavy information. I hope you learned something. As always, peace to everyone who, you know what I'm talking about, watch. Shout out, gratitude, respect to everybody who supports the channel. Love, light, and flight. Hawks don't fly with pigeons. Stay woke. Peace and blessings. Just move on up toward your destination. Though you